Hello, this is Carl Dannerberger, Professor of Turfgrass Science here at The Ohio State University. And uh, the time of the year is late summer, uh, about the first, second week in September. And really this year it is our first uh, relatively cool uh, uh, week of weather after a long, hot summer. Standing here in front of the uh, Chadwick Arboretum, not exactly a turf site, but hopefully you'll see some of the plants behind me, the roses, things like that. And actually they've come back and are starting to recover uh, pretty well with, with the cooler weather. And so this time of the year, whether it's with plants or roses or turf, uh, this is the time for turf recovery. And one of the more important practices that we do during this time is coring, where we um open up the soil and uh, relieve compaction, promote uh, areas for root growth, and also is a time by coring that we can uh, put down a considerable amount of top dressing material along with the coring, coring activities. A couple of suggestions as you move into coring, even if you've done it uh, uh, already or, or looking to do it, this time of the year is the best time to do it because the, tur the turf will recover from that operation the quickest. Later in the year as we go, it'll take longer for those holes to recover. Roughly about three weeks, the turf after coring remains rather unstable. So a couple key things. One is keep the turf watered. The, uh, uh, possibility of, of the turf drying out, especially on a day like this where the humidity levels are low, is high. So again, don't let uh, desiccation or drying around the holes occur. Uh, keep, keep it moist. Second thing too is uh, continually inspect the holes. Uh, cutworms enjoy those kind of uh, uh, environments around those holes to feed. So uh, if you see some activity, you'll need to make uh, an insecticide application. And third is, again, this is also be a good time after coring and you're promoting turf recovery to fertilize.